when confronting challenges in our world, most of us have a natural inclination to try to improve. We strive to do things better and more efficiently. We take steps we think will lead to positive change, like better health or more environmentally friendly practices, and we adjust if we are not moving toward our desired outcome. There is a methodical approach to creating positive change. This is what we call improvement science. Approaches to improvement have built on one another over time. Some examples include total quality management, lean Six Sigma, model for improvement, and Schiff's approach to improvement. These approaches vary in their specifics, but at their core, they have four key elements in common. First, these approaches engage those doing the work on a day-to-day -day basis to identify areas for improvement. When Toyota revolutionized the auto industry, they didn't do it by asking the executives how to improve. They asked people on the assembly line what challenges they were facing and where they saw room for improvement, identifying opportunities to improve safety and quality that executives never would have noticed. While social sector systems aren't producing cars, there is an important lesson in engaging those closest to the work to solve the problems. Second, all these approaches generate learning and innovation through rapid testing to put ideas into practice. Rapid testing, like PDSA cycles, help us learn which ideas drive positive change and accelerate large-scale adoption of those ideas. Third, all approaches use frequently collected data from systems or processes for learning, not judgment or inspection. Frequent data collection and review helps everyone involved in an improvement initiative learn what is working and agree on where there's more work to be done. Finally, each approach is intended to learn from and reduce variation to get better outcomes. Reducing variation is one of the first signs of systems improvement, helping us build better, safer, or more reliable processes and systems. Now that we understand more about the elements that are shared within approaches to improvement, let's look at the broader ecosystem in which improvement occurs. Quality assurance typically involves setting minimum standards and then regularly verifying that those standards are met reacting when the system's performance falls below that minimum standard. Examples of quality assurance efforts include accreditation, certification, or even institutional policy. We rely on research to generate new evidence and guide effective practices for the field. Translating that evidence into practice and then spreading it across the field can take time. Standards can be slow to update and may not reflect the latest scientific knowledge. This time lag between research and practice results is what is referred to as the knowing-doing gap. Improvement accelerates the adoption of new practices. Improvement approaches use rapid testing to facilitate the application of research-generated evidence to everyday practice, accelerating its wide-scale adoption. Now you may be asking, why does this matter to me as an educator, healthcare professional, or social service provider? Imagine a world where every person goes to the hospital and returns home well, Every person has enough healthy food to eat, and every student, no matter where they are or who they are, gets a quality education that enriches their lives. Imagine a world where systems are redesigned to work with the earth and are regenerative rather than destructive. To get to this place, it isn't enough to set minimum standards or avoid catastrophic failures. This requires a larger cultural and personal transformation in how and why we improve. To meet the challenge of building a more just and equitable society, we need improvement for equity. To shift, improvement for equity includes not only the shared elements described earlier, but also noticing the inequitable outcomes that systems produce, using improvement methods to inquire about the roots of those inequities, and then acting to facilitate justice through the intentional redesign of systems to meet the needs of all those they serve. With this justice-centered framing, Effective improvement is not only a question of skill and capacity. Improvement for equity requires that people reimagine systems to better serve everyone, share power and control by designing with those impacted by a system, and equip organizations and communities with the flexibility to meet changing needs. With this understanding of improvement for equity, let's look at the connection between quality assurance, improvement, and improvement for equity through diagrams. In quality assurance, we prevent the worst outcomes from happening for most people. In improvement, 
We aim to shift the mean outcome for everyone, which also removes the worst outcomes. However, there is still variation, meaning many people still experience inequities within the system. Shift is not alone in recognizing that the way we approach improvement needs to evolve to meet the long overdue challenge of building a more just and equitable society. The curve in this diagram is significantly narrowed and everyone's outcomes have improved. To achieve this, we improve the experiences of those least served by the system. This focus moves us toward an aspirational universal goal of more people with the best outcomes while removing variation and inequities. This is the world improvement for equity is designed to move us toward. With equity at the forefront, what improvements can you imagine? To learn more about SHIFT and our approach to improvement for equity, visit our website at shift-results.com.